Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm just saying just for ours, too. Right. And then you fire up Zoom here, and it ties in, yeah, it ties in. the cameras. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only connection, the only complication I could see with the Zoom would be
<laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, welcome. It's uh, 4.30. Today is July 14th, and we are joining uh, for a continuation of our joint Finance Committee and Rules and Policy Committee meeting, both with the same committee members. Uh, first <clears throat> item on the agenda is a call to order and then uh, attendance. And we have a, a full slate here. We had a resignation. Uh, Councillor Gleistein uh, resigned from the council due to relocating. And Chairman Johnson has agreed to sit in and, and, and fill her spot uh, in the interim. So we have uh, Councillor Anderson, Clucci, and uh, Chairman Johnson here today. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our May 19th, 2021 meeting. And do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, and <clears throat> uh, all those in favor? And that passes unanimously. Uh, next up is the June 2021 bond order proposal. And this is something that came to council at first reading uh, last month. And we've been doing some prep work to get it ready for finance committee re review. And this is our initial review. We have our finance director, Ruth Porter, here. Um, who has provided a whole bunch of information, but I'm hoping you can step us through it and kind of give an introduction, an overview. Sure, we generally go out to bond every year, uh, depending on what the projects are that are out there. Uh, this year it's a, kind of a small pro uh, listing of items. Some of them are current years, are FY21, some of them are, are a little bit older as these projects uh, come to fruition. And, and normally what we try to do, to the extent that we can, is we try to fund or pay as we go on the projects and then at the end of the year, beginning of the year, beginning of a calendar year, we try and go out to bond and uh, reimburse ourselves to the extent that we can. You know, for larger projects, we, like a public safety building, we really can't do that. So um, we do those borrowings. So um, some of these are the first grouping is like 2465000 roughly. And that's various CIP projects that have been approved by the council. And they didn't need any voter approval. So once the council approved the expenditures, then we can, uh, or the budget for them, then we can go out and bond them. The second page goes into various items that really are uh, voter approved. And so based on the way we write this bond order, they get listed separately. So for example, we have a $1.2 million fire truck. I think it was the ladder truck. We sure. also have, a, out of the $660,000 pumper truck, we had borrowed some of that initially in a prior year. So now we only need an additional 186,000 roughly to finish that project off. And then, uh, the voters approved a two and a half million dollar land bond and we purchased the Alger building with that. It's more than just a land bond, it's, it mm -hmm. covers quite a few items. And so part of that is in this two and a half million dollar land bond and the small $1,900 balance is in the one million dollar land bond that was voter approved back in 2009. So that will finish off that old land bond and then we'll be working off the two and a half million. All of these added up plus one other item. I think there's just one other item that was voter approved in a prior year for, vote, for bonding. So that's not included in this bond order because we already have a bond order for it. The total that we plan to or asking uh, to go out to bond is $4,305,000. Thank you. So <clears throat> I was jumping around on the screen. Just for people at home, the packet for today's Finance Committee agenda, the I think page seven or eight, has much of the detail that Ruth was talking to. But she was actually referring to the bond order that's in the, um, the Town Council agenda that's packet from right. the last meeting. Um, thank so you. So if they wanted to know for that one, oh, sorry. No, oh, I'll go back. The very first one is one of the land bond uh, purchases. The 1.2 yeah. is like four down, that's for the uh, ladder truck. 
somewhere in there. I don't know where the other one is. 186, 760, a couple down from the ladder truck is the pumper truck. And then way at the bottom at $1,900 is the, the last of the Alger building, William King Temple. So, so those are the voter approved <coughs> items in the, the list. The pumper truck was voter approved. Yep. And for, for uh, folks, information. The second one there that looks really kind of high is the 867,000 mid-level paving. That doesn't need voter approval per the town charter. Charter, so uh, because it's considered road construction and those are exempt from, from that requirement. Okay. So then I'm going to come back to the packet and try to blow this up. This is... I'll walk through what <clears throat> is included in the packet, I, I think, quickly. It, um, so you broke it out by bond order. By the different bond orders, or the different items we bonded each year, yeah, and, and what's included in them. And you identified what was budgeted, I think, is what the town council authorized. Mm -hmm. It's um, either that or it's the actual bond amount authorized because we might... Okay. You might break it between multiple years. Correct. And then you have, you identify how much has been bonded to date, mm -hmm. <clears throat> what was spent, and, and and then you have some notes for some of these. There's might be outstanding authorization that needs to be rescinded. Right, and you can see on that first section, they're all fairly old projects, and, and they need to be rescinded for one reason or another. So that will be an action. We'll come back to this body and ask you to um, authorize that. Ultimately, I think the council needs to do the rescinding, but... We intend to come back to you shortly with a, a list of these to be kind of wiped off the... So it, <clears throat> I'll try to explain it the way I'm vaguely understanding it. Each year through budget, we authorize a number of projects, um, and those get thrown into a queue. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're actually going to happen in the next year. They might happen over the next three to five years. They may never happen, depending mm -hmm. you know, situations might change. But they sit in their queue until they're either completed or we take them out. And I, each year when we go to raise funds, so some of the money for these projects comes from the taxpayer, and some of them is, is borrowed through intercompany or our own funds that we have on hand. Um, <clears throat> but then we need to pay ourselves back or fund for future projects, and that's why we issue bonds. And I think the, back to page seven, is what's being proposed for this year's bond order. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, so some of them have a bond order like 21052, that's the actual order number in the, uh, the town council packet. And some of them are blank. Um, I can see that this one, it's an appropriation, so that makes sense. We're not gonna issue a bond for it. Is, is this one blank because it was voter approved, the, the ladder truck? Yeah, that might just be a error because we usually have I think that should have had a bond order number on it but it would be the same one wouldn't it yeah we're requesting the million two so yeah it would be the the same 21052 so that might have just been an oversight so I think everything on that list is <coughs> should be in, intends to be included in the 21052 everything that's not an appropriation Correct. <coughs> and if it's appropriation, I don't know why it would be there in the first place. Well, this was just the total amount that was... Yeah, I'm not sure why it is either, actually, because that's the amount that was in 2021. So I listed all of the 2021 okay. items that were approved by the council and then showed right. which ones we need bond orders for and which ones were appropriated, so we don't gotcha. need bond orders. Yep. And we have nothing from the capital budget that we just approved. Correct. Going into this bond. Right. Um, does it make sense to look at that? I, like, are there, are, I, I know it's a small, smaller bond order than we're accustomed to, um, and interest rates are low. Are there, are there any low-hanging fruit on this current, the, the most recently approved budget that we expect to take on next year? Well, the challenge we have is... Uh, the SEC and the IRS really frown upon, and they highly regulate um, how long you can hold bond proceeds for. Mm -hmm. So we typically uh, want to be very thoughtful around when we receive those. We cannot hold them. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, there was uh, folks you know, borrowing money tax-exempt and investing it and making great returns. And so 
their way around that is that we need to spend them down within certain time frames, six months, 12 months, and 18, 18 months. months. And two years. So six months are most of the vehicles types of purchases. So, you know, if they don't borrow, I mean, if they don't purchase those, if we borrow that money now and we don't purchase them until next April, then we're past our six month time frame. I guess the other thing I would say, uh, we're only, you know, what, not even 30 days into the new fiscal year. So yeah, a number of those items were actually on the street bidding as we speak. Um, we don't know the exact amount. We've got a budget figure that was approved, uh, but we don't actually have the, the final value for which we need bonding, uh, you know, bond financing for. So it's really a timing issue. Um, and in most cases, we're in front of you in March, April timeframe before the budget's even adopted. So this year might be unique to fold some of those in, but I, I don't know that we have enough and good information to be able to fold some of those FY22 CIP items into this bond issue. And there are a couple that need voter approval, um, the turf field and uh, something else. Did it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the bigger ticket ones, that it didn't look like they would fit. The um, uh, construction project, uh, Gorham Road, that was one that, that jumped out that maybe that would start before we do this next year. No, in fact, that's going to be delayed a whole other season, it seems. Oh, okay. Um, just late-breaking news. Um, that requires the gas line and sewer line to be replaced before we do our work. Mm -hmm. And that was scheduled to happen this summer. Just yesterday, we learned that they're not going to do that this summer. So mm -hmm. everything's kind of pushed back a year. That's a great example of our best expectations of when projects going to happen, then other things happen that affect our timeline. So we won't spend those funds for probably 24 months at this point okay. um, in reality. And just uh, so I understand that. So if we went out and bonded that ahead of time, so to speak, we, we're running the risk of being in violation. We are. Right. Because yeah, okay. we, we wouldn't we'll spend. receive those monies. We're not be the, in yeah, an interest bearing account, yeah, and yeah. we'll have to account for the fact that we received them well in advance of the need. And the 6, 12, 18, 24 months, are those categorized depending on what type of project it is? Correct. Like, like and that's, that's, okay. And that's their rule. Those aren't your rules. So that's their rules. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the official term is arbitrage yeah, uh, right. when you're making higher interest returns than it costs you to borrow the money, essentially. And what's the penalty? Does it jeopardize our ability to issue tax-exempt bonds? or potentially? It could take all of our prior year tax-exempt bonds and make them taxable, in yeah. addition to the current ones that we're trying to do. So we try to avoid that. That's a big deal. <laughs> Have we ever inadvertently done it, or is there... I'm just trying to understand that. Uh, yeah. I don't think we have. I think we, well, I think we have, but there's also a little, they give you a little out. Sure. So if yeah. the total amount you bonded, if you have 5% of it, I think is un, unspent within, you know, and you've gone past your time frames, you're, you're kind of okay. Yeah. Now, another question along those lines is, like some of these numbers, they seem to come out remarkably even. Uh, how do you account, do you account for individual projects? For what we've actually spent for those projects, or you just account for how much of the bond bond we've spent? Uh, so when we actually do a bond, so the grand total at the bottom of that page is four million three hundred five. Yeah. Technically, I think it came out to four million. Pick a number three hundred and seven thousand. Blah blah blah. And change. I can't borrow that much. It has to be in increments of five thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. once I figure out how much we need. Then I say, okay, what's the five thousand above it, the five thousand below, and whichever one's closer is the one I go to. So this one was, I could have gone to four million three hundred and ten because that's divisible by five thousand evenly, but uh, the number didn't quite work that way. So then what I do is I go through and say, okay, the mid-level road rehab was really fifty-four thousand nine hundred and fifty-nine dollars. So I take a little bit out so we don't bond as much for that project. We probably still spent it, but. Uh, the town ends up making up the difference. And can you shift between from one project to another? Like, let's say that you over uh, estimate, uh, I, I don't know, the fire truck, the bumper truck, too. Uh, I, and you issue bonds for the full amount. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the uh, with the leftover? Can that go to another capital project, or how do you how do you work that? In? According to the uh, legal bond council, they say that I can't take like an engine to pumper unspent funds and transfer it over to a school department something but there is a little bit of leeway if it's a fire truck to a fire truck 
something like that. So there, there is a little bit of play, but what they really want us to do is to say, vehicles, construction, yeah. something else. But then we did that one year, and it made it very difficult for us to try and figure out how everything goes. So uh, for us, it's easier to track. I think it can go systems. to pay down debt cost, right? Right, and, and that's <coughs> correct. Anything that's unspent goes to pay debt. We can reduce our interest costs. We can't reduce our Okay, you can use it. Is that a is that by policy or is that your discretion or? That's that's another. This is a federal. federal okay. 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 Yeah. 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 A lot of what we do is, I mean, even the fact that we come to you to do a bonding is based on state and federal sure. requirements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a number of safeguards. I mean, we've got the initial budget authorization, uh, which limits what we can do. Fun funds aren't fungible from one project to another, particularly in capital. Uh, and then I think we have further requirements when we actually go and sell the bonds the the investors are we're giving the we're giving them the legal assurance that this is what we're using the money for and I think we need to stay true to that or we may run the risk of somehow uh, running afoul of, of that legal and financial agreement with our bondholders when we complete the official statement or the preliminary official statement we are essentially saying that everything in this document you know how we're re how we're showing it and everything is is true and accurate yeah. So. yeah, quite honestly, I'm not sure if the bond investors really care what we're borrowing it for. They might. Uh, they're more concerned about who, uh, who we are and yeah. what our credit risks are. Um, but that level of detail, and, and John, I invite you to be part. I think you will be part of our rating calls. You'll get an appreciation for the level of detail that is provided to the investors. So I've only dug into a couple of these. I just want to step through an example because I think it, it might help to illustrate the process a little bit. This is the adopted budget from fiscal year 20, um, and the pumper truck example, re engine two replacement. So <coughs> the, the town council in 2019, when they approved the, the fiscal 2020 budget, said, yeah, that's a project we want to take on for 660,000. It then would, would have gone to the voters in November of, of 2020 to get approved for 660,000. And then if we look at last year's bond order, which is the 2020, we have a FY20 FD replacement engine two. Um, it's showing an, a town council authorized of 465, but that's because you took the total budget amount and said this, we're only gonna issue so much right now. So that was the bond order amount at that point. So it was essentially the bond order amount. And just so you appreciate on that one, there are prepayment um, incentives for us. And so I think what that amount, uh, represents it's basically a two-thirds payment that we paid up front okay and in turn got a reduced rate uh, right. more favorable rate so that's what that was their funding requirement and there's a secondary piece that I think we which touch is in on this now. bond order the final piece I should say second and final so where did it go oh it's gonna be down here because uh, so the engine two pumper mm -hmm. so here we have the the budget is 652. So originally it was budgeted at 660 um, through the budget process, and ultimately we found out it was going to cost 652. Well, they they're going, no, it actually cost <coughs> the 660. They just had uh, they estimated a $7,500 trade-in on something. Okay. So we only needed to theoretically we're still going to spend the full 660, less. but right. Okay. So when I'm thinking, I think it jives. I think it, it makes sense. What threw me for a loop is when I looked at the budget saying 652 and the bond request is 186, mm -hmm. I read that as we still have another 400 and something yeah, right. to pay. Mm -hmm. When it, I think it might be helpful, and I don't know if it's possible to do this for the final council vote, uh, is to add a bond to date or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. along those lines. And this budget number be the actual, what was actually approved. Um, other than that, I think what you have for spent is... Uh, it would make it easier for me to follow anyways. And I think, um, you know, like some of these with the, the repairs and upgrades. Um, okay, so you, you'll just add the bond order number there. I was also trying to understand why we're missing the bond order number. For oh, it could be that they're not included. Well, that 266 Well, I think it's been, a bit of yeah, both. Yeah, the 266 yeah, sure. would have, yeah. Yeah, but the 150 probably yep. is not. Yeah. Um, so maybe just making that easier to follow. So what are the, the ones that aren't included or things that are still on our capital plan or budget that, that we haven't brought forward yet. Yeah, and so, you know, we have 
lingering budget authority for projects back to fiscal year 2008 anyway, maybe even earlier. Earlier. We have one project a long time ago, but I and, think it's in the rescinded and, and so some of those, the project's done and there's just a balance left over, but it's still an authorization that exists that we need to have just make go away so Ruth doesn't have to continue to track it. There's other ones, and it's more on the school side, and I don't mean to single them out, but they'll, they'll have a category called district-wide flooring, right? They've got a million square feet of floor or whatever it is that they need, and they say we need 50000 every other year, something like that. But they don't always spend it. Spend it. Or it, you know, might, they might amass two hundred fifty thousand before they actually do a project of any significance. So th those sorts of authorizations that come through as a normal course of CIP budget approval really create some headache for mm -hmm. Ruth to track that, just because they don't respect the fiscal year um, and the nature of the of the project. Uh, sometimes it's a decade before they're spent. So we we'd like to work with our school colleagues and frankly ourselves to tighten that up so we don't have this historical tracking that um, causes a whole lot of work and effort on Ruth's part. Yeah, that's, it's quite a and tracking process. And doesn't present the same sort of problems when they come to you. That it makes it tricky. Yeah. yeah. Um, and especially, it sounds like that, you know, they're, they're general maintenance items, not necessarily major capital. Fair enough. Um, in, a, in a perfect world, they'd be part of the operational budget. But then you can't carry an operational budget. Well, you can through fund balance, but they're restricted with how much they can carry forward Correct. each year. So they're happy enough, I think, and again, I don't mean to implicate them, but it happens more on their side to kind of, oh, that authorization still is out there. We'll grab it when we need it. Well, in the meantime, we've got to keep kind of tracking it all the way. Through. And then somebody has to approve the bond order. Yeah, and then we're in front of you saying, oh, yeah, do you remember 10 years ago when you approved this? We'd like to use it now. The other thing we could do is keep it under capital because capital tends to carry if it needs to, but, you know, these $50,000 items, we... We made a big effort this year uh, uh, to try to appropriate as many of those as we could. So if we can get that into an appropriated as opposed to a bonded, then that helps it a little bit because I don't have to track it as, right. as diligently as I do with the bonds. And the appropriated items almost always are flushed through in the same fiscal year they're approved. Uh, it's because of the value and the nature of the item. Uh, it's a lot, you know, the, uh, it's... It's the issue that brings us together today. It's the ones that the ones that linger, the ones that uh, require bond financing, typically. So just just for me, because the more I stare at this, the more I get confused. So can you just Ruth just like walk us through what each column is, what it means, and just kind of give us an example? Because the one John brought up, I thought was helpful for me to just kind of grasp it, but you had to like reach into many places yeah. to kind of tell the story, and so. If the rest of the counselor is going to look at this, I think just really making sure it tells the right story would be really helpful just so that we don't have questions. Because I still see some blanks and I'm like, well, it's not blank in this row, but it's blank in that row. Yeah, so, I, think, I, I apologize. I think I was trying to get it done and I didn't complete it totally. But, okay. Uh, so that's, uh, that's me. So the first one tells us which year the budget item, the capital item was actually authorized in. So mm -hmm. you look at the bottom pieces, there's some... 1617 is the last of some mid-level road recap. The second column tells us... And that's, us sorry, just to interrupt. So that's the total budget that was approved in that year. But, for that specific project, correct. But there are some exceptions, like John mentioned, with the, the fire department, where it was actually budgeted for 660, <coughs> yet... Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I it would be good to make that the authorized, the total budget. So I might have to set yeah. up a second column that says, you know, non-bond or something that shows that there's additional funding. Or it could be just like initially authorized. And then if there was some sort of adjustment column that happened, I think just knowing yeah. that something changed, whatever it was. And if we could have like a note on the side for that 652 that just says if that's like the actual. Right. So it, it would say uh, authorized 660, 7,500. Uh, yeah. Other revenues, other mm -hmm. sources, uh, and other funding, maybe, and then. Um, and previously bonded, I think, though. Previously bonded. Yeah, I think, then, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's good. So then um, then it's the bond order. And that, that's that, all in the future. All yeah. those are, hasn't happened yet. None of these have That's happened. what you're asking. That's yeah. the order we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, quite, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Except Continue. for those few that I messed up on, but, uh, and then there's some that are appropriated. I, I think I put them in there just so you could see that mm -hmm. not everything that gets put through the capital budget is is bonded. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so the, 
next column is a description of what the item is. The column next to that is the amount of the budget, but like you said, it's I was only putting the amount that we thought we were going to need for bonding. And then the bond request is how much we're actually asking the council to bond for that. As part of this order. As part of this order, right. correct. And then uh, what we spent, that was through June. And then there's the status or the balance. So I either said it's closed or it's, you know, how much we have left to, to borrow, mm -hmm. uh, to spend. So in that spent column, that's like of the originally approved budget, how much has been spent to date supporting that particular item? Or is that how much is being spent this year? So if we were to look at the uh, fire truck again, I can find it. Um, what it does is second one down, right? Third, um, third from the bottom? That's the this one, one we're talking about. Yeah, yeah the, the pumper truck. Okay. That one. So we actually spent more than that, so I'm probably going to have to do a third one next year. But um, that's how much we're asking for or what we've spent at this point in time. This was through June 3rd. I think okay. they finalized and finished it all off a couple weeks later. Mm -hmm. So um, That's the truck we just put in service on July 4th mm -hmm. at Pine Point. And the status and the balance is the difference between is either it's closed because they're right in the middle there. There's a couple, one's for 142,000 and one's for 150,000 uh, for school, high school went where air conditioning controls and server and uh, district wide AC repairs, HVAC repairs. So the 150, we haven't spent anything. And so, uh, I think that's why it's not in this list to be bonded, so there is no, I didn't put the bond order next to it. But the one above it, the 142,000, um, I don't think that's in here either, actually. So those two don't have bond orders, even though they're going to be bonded. We haven't spent anything yet, so I, they're not included in, in this upcoming issue. Looks like you have the 142 one in the bond, though. In the bond I think I what, I what I do is I'll go to all the departments and say, what do you think you're going to spend between now and December? Mm -hmm. That gives us like a, a time frame. And uh, they would have come back probably and said, we're planning to spend this. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm assuming that they said, yes, we're going to spend the 142. Okay. I th just some observations. I think as the finance director, I think we're looking at a snapshot Right, and but we're trying to sort out the historical yeah. <laughs> thread right. behind it. So I think in your world this makes sense, but in our world, right. I think that's yeah. what I think that's yeah. where what we're getting at is that's a snapshot. In the we need the context to be able to say, okay, I mean that the pumper truck was a perfect example, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, I didn't know that we had a discount for putting up two thirds, and we did that last year, and you know, I voted to approve that, right? So that's kind of what I I think couple more columns giving the historical right. and even I mean even what you just said that little nuance of saying well we technically haven't spent the what you know we haven't spent the 142 so it's not included but they said they're going to but we're not right I mean so and we did include it, so, it yeah. yeah right so I just I feel like there's different context and snapshot this is a snapshot I think we just need context because it's not what we're doing you know yeah, I agree. we don't live this mm -hmm. so yeah, we, you know we put this together based on you know how it was easier for us to do it, which is by the, the different bond orders. Yeah. But, you know, we don't have to do it that way. We could do it by the, the fiscal year and the projects. So you can see that, okay, we borrowed 400,000 for this FY 20 project, and now we're borrowing 180, whatever, for this year. So you could see the history of each CIP item that might be easier. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. So, you know, this is oh, all. It, I'm sure it will be easier. Work. I think it'll be easier for us. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then the other thing is, like, I want to understand, am I increasing what was approved by right. a prior council or, right. or not? So showing that, you know, the actual budget amount, because it could, it very well might happen sometimes. Right. You might have some projects that came in over, and that's okay. And the way the order is written, you know, we could appropriate new funds. Um, I just want to know that I'm doing it. Right. If, yeah. if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. That should not happen. I mean, we're limited by the budget authority, so we shouldn't be coming to you and asking for... Uh, you know, a bond request, which would ultimately spend more money than we were originally authorized for. Shouldn't, but we're Shouldn't. the way the order reads is we're actually appropriating the funds, so it, you could. Yeah, because we yeah. went right around about the uh, turf, uh, not the turf field. What oh. was that? 
Um, and that, that's why each of yeah. these pieces is important, so you can yeah. see what yeah. was authorized, yes. what yeah. we spent, what yeah. we're now. Because right on the ballot, it does say this: that this is a good faith estimation and does and mm -hmm. could include overage or what have you. When they right, oh, the then, public safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. the public safety yeah. ballot. Yeah, so like the pumper truck, your example, where let's say we need to do additional authorization, and it go, comes in ahead of or, or more than what the voters authorize at 660. Um, can we do that? Can the council, like if we need to issue another 20,000 to finish that project? My, my position would be no. Okay. okay. No, voters have approved a certain amount, uh, and in most cases, uh, in other cases, the council's approved a certain amount. I suppose the council could probably come back and say, "Okay, yeah, it will authorize an additional five thousand if it's not a voter." If it's appropriate, item. yeah, right. yeah. I would think the council would have that authority as long as it didn't have to go to the voters. Kind of depends how the charter is written, too. But yeah. I think currently, if you're not sending a new appropriation request, well, I, I guess the, the takeaway I want you to have is that we take the ultimate, the initial budget authority as sacred. Yeah, okay. uh, we stay within that. Yes, we can. Is it is it sorry to, is it worth us in real time agreeing on what columns we want to see for the just I mean I know obviously we've given you some feedback but do we yeah. want to all agree on <coughs> that might help just knowing the other three people have to look at it yeah. you want to do that or? yeah mm -hmm. yeah and I, I so I don't know that we need all the pages above this I think for the council this page pro is probably sufficient right What's on this the was just order? all yeah. those three yeah, pages right. were at. Okay. Um, yeah. Council request to see all yeah. of the stuff. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, you're right. For this one, and then I was thinking for the budget, it's actually what was approved in the um, through the mm -hmm. budget process. Is that? Yep, 100% agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I had added a bonded to date column. Yep. Yep. You have the bond request, which should tie to what you're asking for in the bond order. The spent I thought was good. Um, and then I, I liked your other funding source. It could yeah. be reserved. That will happen or... frequently, I think. Right. If there aren't that many of them, usually whatever it is. is if they're on is, the bond right. order, yeah. they're probably not. Yeah. And I, I would just add, adding that column for some contextual things, Ruth, for you to provide mm -hmm. anything that you think might be mm -hmm. informational that people would be interested it in. It might be easier to footnote. So take that one, for instance, uh, that pumper truck, 660 mm -hmm. was the number that will show in the bond uh, budget authorization. And then budget says 652-500 might be easier because it's the exception to the rule is to footnote and say $7,500 yeah. paid in, um, you know, full project costs. Well, I just, I don't think that's, that's fair, but I think there's so many of them, I think it probably would be worth, right? I mean, because a lot of these are, how many of these are, are bonded in two different orders? Oh, well, the different bonding ones, mm. yes, but if it was going to yeah. be other financing sources mm -hmm. besides yeah. bonding, like the trade-in. Yeah. I think one of the biggest hiccups here is if it's been funded through two different bond orders or Three, yeah, I'm sure three yeah, happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that's really what I, that's one of the things we're missing. So, mm -hmm. so John, I would actually, I would second what you asked. I, I would for more than a footnote and actual. Like an actual column? Yeah. And maybe, maybe we can pull out the appropriation piece or put it separately yeah. just so that it just is less stuff for the, for the rest of us to look at. Right. So the list uh, limits itself to what's being, yeah. what's included in the bond order. Mm -hmm. So appropriated. Yeah, I, I don't think we need the appropriated, right? Yeah. That, that's what you're saying? Yeah. I don't, well, either we can, you can put, put it, it down at the bottom just right? to remind us of what that is and how it's different, but it's not They want the a discrete order. list that contains yeah, only the items Get rid of those that items. are subject to this bond confusion. Order. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, you still want the total amount that was appropriated for this for this bond order, right? Yeah, I think we're just saying get rid of the, anything on your far right-hand column that says appropriation, Get scratch it. Oh, get those out of yeah. there. Yeah. Is there a reason to keep them there, I guess? This well, that equals the, to the 4 million theoretically, equals the <coughs> amount that was the CIP, but they can't be right because that should have said 660, so I don't know. And I I'll mean, to me, this isn't a CIP. Well, and it's not, a CI it's not the CIP, right? This is a bond order, so I think right. keeping it within the scope of what we're voting on. Yeah, usually what I do is I have all my appropriated guys at the bottom. So yeah, that, right. You know, yeah, I think that's what they're asking to do is to separate them. Mm -hmm. So appropriated and then bond. Bonded to date. So bond request. So you don't really need appropriation and budget is the same. We just need something that shows other sources of 
and then um, budget today, bonded today, excuse me, spent and balance. Yep. And the balance was actually kind of confusing to me, so I don't know if it's necessary. Right, because the, the bond of the day <laughs> plus the bond that you're asking for should equal what was budgeted. Right. Right? So. Or unless you have another. Unless you, bond. well, then that could be like the column, the, it could be more to be bonded. Yeah. Like, to, does that make sense? Because I think you, in, I think your spent and our spent are two different languages. So I, I think if we just did bonded to date, bonded request, if those don't add up to the, what's budgeted, then we know there's another bond coming for that project. Or maybe just to keep it even simpler, just yeah. say to be bonded in the future and just it put, that in there Right, and then so that you add them all up and it equals yeah. what we... Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just yeah. trying to do some simple... Bonded math. today, yeah. bond yeah. request, to be bonded in the future. Yeah. Yes. Possible future bond. Yes. <laughs> all right, so uh, you're looking at three columns now? Did I miss something? Yeah, yeah. but we're getting ready or spent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, so it's balanced. Really, <laughs> well, I think they like the number, but it should be titled uh, I actually like to, to be... Do you? Oh, I thought you just said you were... Was I piggybacking on you when you said you didn't like the spent? I like the spent because it's a check of if we're exceeding what was originally authorized to spend on the project All so right. if you, when you have but, other funding sources but you want total spent yeah i guess not, not just good. this not just year this bond issue. that's right that's what's been difference. spent so far on this project or yes because that spent is this snapshot this year it's not on the project that's right Correct. yeah and that's Case where the confusion that's, that's where the confusion is yeah that yeah. 186 yes. yeah it's not reflective of Correct. Yes. Everything's been spent on that project. 000. Makes sense for yes. you and your fiscal year thinking, but it doesn't make sense for us with our, hey, how much have we spent? So I could put asterisks, for example, next to that one, and then below that I could say, okay, here's the rest of it. And here's the total spent. Well, right. just the total spent on total the project. Total spent, yeah, I think, in that spent. column. Yeah. But then won't that be confusing because you're going to say, well, you're only asking for 186 and you're telling me you spent 660. No, Which because that's previously bonded. <coughs> you have a column that right. says yeah. previously bonded. Yeah. Okay. It's going to make it would make perfect sense to us, right? Yeah. So I'm trying to gauge, kind of like a bunch of people are trying to do the same thing, right? The, the same thing our creditors are yep. looking at. Or are these the, the projects that were already approved and authorized? And I want to be able to look at this piece of paper and, and say, yeah, okay, we're, we're within our discretion. Or if I'm authorizing something new, I want to understand that too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, fair point. Do you have editable access on that? You want to edit the tops, or you know what I mean? I so we can don't. All, no. This is just from no. the. Uh, I think we have it. Okay. Uh, we'll circle back to get okay. yeah, yeah, clarification. No, that's true. You okay? Think, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and you think this is possible for before next week's meeting? Yeah, I think so. Because it's not. I, I already have previously bonded. Yeah. Right, yeah. That's yeah. how I track it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yes, it looks like some copying paste. <laughs> some yeah, primarily yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you said to remove the appropriated guys, right? Or do you? I would get rid of the right-hand right. column altogether. No, I mean, yeah. well, yeah. Or, or shift them down. Yeah. Be bonded, yeah. Yeah. yeah if, I mean, if the totals are important to you, you can keep them, but I would just separate the to be bonded from the appropriations. Okay. We could probably lose that column that says bond order. The, the assumption is everything on this list is... Is the bond order we're looking yeah. at. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you need so, to save some space and correct. clean it yeah. up. Yeah. That, that did throw me for a loop. See, so we got we have only added three columns and got rid of two, right? So we're simplifying. <laughs> That's some efficient government. <laughs> but, but if it makes it uh, go smoother in the future, I think it'll be well worth the effort. Um, Good. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. That help. Any other discussion or, or comments no. on, on the bond? Or, uh, so it, everybody's comfortable with this going forward mm -hmm. for the full council? Of, assuming we're changing the, yeah, absolutely. Yep. So yep. the presentation. And, and we're and, trusting you to have Ruth circle with you and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely right. yeah. Yep. so we'll get it we'll try to get in the packet for next week's meeting yep Great. it's so currently Friday in the draft Friday. agenda yeah. Yeah. wonderful um, the next item on the agenda I don't have any visuals for it's something that I just wanted to start talking through uh, it's the growth tax and um, uh, it's kind of more important now than I think it has been to us in the past because we are uh, no longer a minimum receiver of education. So I think it's just important for us to be aware that when we put a new piece of property on our rolls, um, not all of that tax money comes to us. There are trade-offs. Uh, for example, the, the amount of funding that we get for schools is determined by how much value we have, according to the state. Uh, so isn't the amount we pay for property tax, uh, prop, uh, county taxes, and uh, 
uh, revenue sharing that we get from the state. So <clears throat> in the days of being a minimum receiver, there was a relatively small trade-off. So we kept 95% of the tax, the new taxes coming in. As a minimum receiver, it's probably closer to 50, 50, 45 to 50% that, that we get to keep. Uh, unless we do something else with it. There's, you know, if we shelter the value in a TIF district or, um, or capture the value, I should say. Um, so there, it's just a dynamic. I wish I had examples. I don't this time. Maybe the next time we meet, we can uh, try to dive a little mm -hmm. deeper and walk through an example. But um, it's something that I think will play along with discussions that we're going to have in the coming months. That uh, uh, It's important to understand what happens to when we take a new tax dollar in. Are we, are we paying something out, or is it ours to, ours to spend? And I don't know if you, if, Tom, if you or staff have. Yeah, I think in. we're, um, we've agreed to have some sort of TIF 101 discussion in maybe as soon as August, frankly. But I think it will come up and be very important in, to the extent we have future requests for CEAs, uh, our ability to support those, I think, changes as a result of this, the, the shelter benefits that we now enjoy. Um, secondarily, I think we should be more thoughtful, frankly, about how we're managing our own existing TIFs, uh, particularly the downtown TIF. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've chosen to uh, have just 3% of that going toward qualified projects. Um, I think we're in a position now of perhaps considering a larger percentage, um, and you know that's a whole deeper discussion. But I think the, the the economics and the circumstances are such that that equation is totally different than it than it was uh, in the first instance. And uh, you know, John and I have kicked it around. I, I don't have a strong sense of you know we just miraculously came out of this status of minimal receiver. I just don't know how quickly we can fall back into it. And that's something, personally, I want to get a better handle on. Maybe that's worth a workshop or something similar in, mm -hmm. in itself. It, I mean, it's a function of how much funding the state is willing to put towards education right now. Mm -hmm. it, but there's other factors that it, play Isn't it also a function of our growth in comparison to others? It, it is, and our enrollment in, in comparison so to others. So there's a lot of factors. And I, yeah. I, uh, it's worth a deeper dive. Yeah, I would, yeah. as you're talking... I'm just like seeing like a roadmap in my mind of like training or discussions we need to have about, okay, we're, we're no longer in this minimal receivership, potentially. What are the consequences of that? What does that mean? And then there's probably the TIP 101 piece, CEAs, all of these things we need mm -hmm. to consider and just all get a little bit wiser on. So I think just figuring out how do we bring everybody together and bring bring everybody on that journey to really make sure we all have an understanding of how our decisions might have different impacts now than maybe they have had have had in the past. So I think that would be really worth just spending some time with somebody who could really walk yep. us through all of that. Yeah, I, I think we should. We should and we can have that. Shauna Mueller is uh, you know, one of the statewide experts. I think she would be a great one to help kind of provide that one-on-one and it would spawn a whole bunch of questions and maybe mm -hmm. further discussion in, in workshops. But the one takeaway, uh, John kind of moved past it quickly, but by capturing the, the shelter benefit um, you know, goes from 5% to 50%. So it's a real significant change. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game changer in many respects. And when you look at particularly the downtown TIF, the sort of capture potential in those thousand acres, the downs being, you know, kind of the tail wagging the dog there, there's significant potential there. So it's kind of like a 401k, right? If your mm -hmm. company's matching you 5%, you know, you, it, it's not a huge incentive for you to put away to it, but if they're matching you at 50%, yeah. it's a big deal. And that's kind of the situation we're in mm -hmm. now, where um, if we find authorized uses or allowable uses mm -hmm. uh, to spend some of those tax dollars, um, the state matches it at 50%, essentially, is, is how it works. And the absolute no-brainer is those uses, um, There, I, I can think of significant uses that are already in our operating budget. We're already spending yeah. money on Right. that we could right. be using these funds. And um, getting matched for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. Uh, that those are decisions that we control, frankly, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, working with DCD and getting our development program modified um, to increase the, the amount we send to our TIF fund account and what we choose to use it for. So that's kind of what I'm seeing this progression leading up to is more of a strategy mm -hmm. for uh, how we leverage the, the, the opportunities that we have in front yeah, of us. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I just echo what Councilor Anderson said. I think 
we need as a body we need education right mm -hmm. it's a whole it's a whole new world and i think before we make another big decision or another cea or or whatever it happens to be mm -hmm. i think we all need to be on the same i mean because it's exciting it's 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 yeah. daunting but it's actually exciting so mm -hmm. this is a huge opportunity and i don't want to squander it by all of us not understanding it so we're making decisions yeah. based on different premises right yeah, so um so to that point, I mean, I, I, I look for Tom's guidance, your guidance yeah. for the TIF 101, if that happens to, you know, we need to have it. We need to have it in August, I would say. And um, yeah, I mean, our CEA it, discussions, as you well know, many of you, uh, can be very d difficult because that, that money that otherwise would flow to the general fund, uh, we're choosing to reimburse it. In most of the rest of Maine, and now we're in the position, in a scenario where uh, new value created um, is a 50% shelter benefit, all of a sudden that 50% that is money you could choose to use for yourself or return through a CEA with no fiscal impact on the bottom line, essentially. So it really changes the, mm -hmm. that conversation entirely. Um, I'm not aware that we have any others in the wings, but uh, I think we should be prepared for it. Yeah, I'll echo that. I don't know any others in the wings either, just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, this isn't a setup for a CEA coming down the road. In fact, but. <laughs> we, we might want to unwind some of the previously approved CEAs that are don't appear to be moving forward. Yeah. Just kind of get them off the books so they get, they're not costing us anything, but they're also just kind of out there. It's not mm -hmm. a liability. Either. Right. I think it might be helpful just to um, clear the clutter and politically just to kind of clear some of the, the or that one, the, the WEX one. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, we're in a different world uh, mm -hmm. relative to when that was approved. It's different. The dynamics have changed. John, John, can you explain how we went from five to a fifty percent match? Like, how, why is that such a huge leap, right? And to Tom's point earlier, what you know, I know we, nobody can predict the future, but you know, are we going to end up right back there in a year's time, or in the, the next election, or you know? So that's right because previous administration balanced balanced the books on the back of. Uh, municipalities and revenue sharing and right and so and education funding right yeah. so that's so might uh, happen again <laughs> right now we're funding education over the next couple of years at, at 55 percent yeah of what the the, the uh, state department of education's formula says education should cost yeah um if you know that goes back down to 45 to 50 percent there will be minimum receivers again um, if it stays at 55, I, I don't see us moving out of it anytime soon. Um, so that's really the controlling factor is how much uh, the state, and then uh, enrollment plays a role. Yeah, yeah, if our enrollment yeah. dips down a lot, then we could dip back in. Um, yeah, but yeah, if yeah. we continue bringing students in or, or maintaining, yeah. um, then we, we, we should stay yeah. about where we are. So now that everybody's head spinning. <laughs> Right, so I guess my only question is, 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 it, is it, I mean, is the TIFF 101 workshop just the Shauna show, or is there, which is okay, you know, I, I mean, she's well, great at what she does. I, what I propose is, if you're willing, maybe John and I can collaborate with her and to kind of okay. talk this through and come yeah. up with a, a initial workshop to at least kind of whet the appetite and mm -hmm. get yeah. the conversation started. Yeah. And perhaps we could do it uh, in August. I'd like to, frankly. Yeah. And, I, and I've said this to you, Tom, but I, and I, again, I, Shauna's fantastic. I guess... I only know her in the context of writing language and discussing, mm -hmm. you know, the the legal side of CEA. Yeah. So I, I guess my my thing I would ask of everybody is that mm -hmm. we need somebody to walk us through numbers, kind of like what we just did with the pumper truck, right? Yeah. So oh, yes. if that's not her, we need to find somebody that it is. You know, I haven't talked to her about it in several years, but Kate Bolton, I think, knows the ins and outs of the school funding formula. School funding, well. yes. I think that would be clear. That's why we should spend some time talking about what, yeah. what we'd right. like to accomplish. Okay. Yeah. It might I, be multiple workshops. I'm happy yeah. to be the guinea pig as the, like the, the person kind of looking at this and getting a little, yeah. you know, lazy eye to say, these are the questions I have as like the novice. So approach it in a very like systematic way of mm -hmm. like, first I want to understand this, then I want to understand that. I think that would act, I think that'd be really helpful, yeah. John. Yeah. So yeah. I'm happy to, yeah. Be be like yeah. send you questions well, yeah. that yeah. I can just say, John. Here's like what I'm thinking based on what I've heard and the questions I have. How do we kind of mm -hmm. build that education and that story so that everybody gets to the same point? Because you, you're here, I feel like I'm here, Paul. Maybe you're like in between somewhere. Yeah. Not too much closer <laughs> to either one of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, your point's well taken with Shauna. You know her uh, 
proposing specific legalese. Correct. On the CJA. Right. Right. I assure you, she is. You know, she teaches MMA classes on the on the matter. All of her. She has many smaller municipality clients that don't have tips, so they're learning it for the first time. So sure. I think she does have yeah. the. And I trust her to be honest enough. If it's not yeah. her wheelhouse, that's fine. Yeah, I just. Fair enough. Yeah. Is there somebody from like the state MMA or, or education yeah, yeah. that could? You know, the other one that does it very well, uh, really well, I think, is Jim Demesis, who yeah. is been on the retainer of uh, the Downs team, um, mm -hmm. but that's his forte. And um, if you'd be amenable, I, he, he, he really has a really good way of kind of introducing the fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him do it countless times. So if you're not opposed to him, given his other representation, um, he might be worth considering. I think he's he, he talked to us on the... Uh uh, one of the affordable housing projects. A couple right? times. Yeah. I, I, I think you're absolutely correct. I, I would lean towards simply because he does represent them in lots of different... And I, I'm not, I, I don't question his integrity yeah. whatsoever, but I do think yeah, I if we get someone that's not getting paid as a consultant from, from interested parties, it's probably... You know, but. Well, John, if you're willing, I'm certainly pleased to, to work with you. I'm sure we can find someone to start the conversation and right. then we'll bring in others as needed. Great. That'll be mid-August. Yeah, I mean, I'd be willing to set it. I mean, we can set the date for this. I, I mean, we we. Do you want to do it as a finance meeting and invite your colleagues to it, or do you no? Want to we need to. Council? I think all of us need to be Yeah, I think full council is better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We already have a workshop scheduled for the August meeting. That's the Herd Park. Yeah, that's right, and that we can't move that. Um, however, I. Can we do it together? Though? What? Yeah, we could. Or I mean, we could do two meetings in August. Because I, I, there's, we discussed something at leadership just just ten minute, an hour and a half ago that I felt like we might need a meeting in August for anyway. So, and I'll remember yeah, it. Once by I the same it. token, I don't know that this issue there's any burning need to have it immediately. But I, agree. I, I think it's important that we have it sooner than later. Yeah, I just there's no stressors right now. That's when everybody's the most clear headed. So mm -hmm. I just I'd like to do it when there's no stressor or there's no. I'd I'd rather m maybe us at the next finance committee talk about. <laughs> A little bit more clearly like what we want to what accomplish in this yeah. training and then maybe do it in okay. September like let just me do this the let's set, let's set the date for the first meeting in September then yeah. well for your next finance perhaps we'll have Shauna here and we can just have her part of the conversation yeah and then she the takeaway is really understanding what that next step is okay yeah mm -hmm. and was, this group can kind of all right and we'll do a soft we'll do a soft date of we'll shoot for the first meeting in September because we're, right. we're back to two meetings in September correct month. okay yep. mm -hmm. so tentatively we'll shoot for the first meeting in September. Great. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So that was actually a productive discussion on growth tax. Uh, the next item up uh, was financial reports, uh, and included with the packet were uh, uh, very detailed uh, revenue expenditure and trial balance, uh, not summary, but detailed uh, reports uh, through May. And Ruth, do you want to talk us through kind of what these are and how we use We've been getting some pressure from other counselors and, and the public to get more um, detailed information out or available or accessible. Um, and this is a first cut. Um, I guess is how I'd introduce it. So we have three areas that we really track. And one is the balance sheet, one is the revenues, and the last are the expenditures. And so what we've been doing is giving the Finance Committee quarterly reports, which takes is, you know, 130 some odd pages and consolidates it into like seven or eight pages. So this shows, for example, the first section shows uh, legislative, which is the town council's costs. And then um, below that is the executive. It just goes by the various. This is the line item detail <coughs> that line item then detail. contained in the budget. So, yeah, there's there are multiple subtotals that we can put in here if you'd like. So right now, total executive includes uh, all of the municipal building, the 29 Black Point Road, maintenance on the public safety building, and the new Alger building, HR, town clerk, <coughs> various insurances, legal, general, it's, it's a whole conglomeration. And that's the grand total of the second. And then, so it shows the budget, if there's been any budget adjustments, which include prior year purchase orders, then we have essentially the subtotal, the revised budget, year-to-date spent, any encumbrances, which are purchase orders, and then available budget, percentage used. And so what we do, so we do that for each major department, if you will, 
and uh, then you get a grand total for, for everything. And this kind of gives you an idea of where we are through the end of May. So it shows that, for example, executive is 90, almost 94% spent as of the end of May. So we would assume that the last 6% or whatever it is is going to be spent this year uh, in June. And then we, so that's the way it is for all of those. We get a subtotal by the fund each, you know, municipal governments run on fund accounting. So the general fund for the town, we have two general funds. We have two special revenue funds, two capital projects. One is for school, one is for town, so we can track ourselves, you know, separately. But finance, the town finance gets all of it, everything. School just deals with their stuff. We deal with everybody. So then we get a grand total of all the, like the general fund, which, uh, and then we go into our special revenues. There's a grand total for that. Those generally don't have a budget associated with them. Sometimes they do, but not not usually. Then we get into the town's capital, and those do have budgets, the 1300s and the 3100s, uh, with grand totals. And the capital are kind of weird because you're seeing expenditures with no budgets, but that's because they might have been appropriated in a prior yeah, year. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah, kind of looks yeah. kind of skewed. And then uh, we go down, and what comes after capital comes the, uh, for us, if there were any, it would be our cemetery funds, which there's no, there's no expenditures. We haven't spent anything out of the cemetery funds. So if there's no expenditures, it doesn't show, because we say exclude the zero balances, otherwise yeah. this report would be twice as big yeah, as right. it yeah. is. Yeah. 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 So then we get down past this, and we come to a grand total of the, I guess we didn't put it on here, but oh yeah, there's a grand total of all of the funds, which, like I said, doesn't show here. And then we'll go in the seven, anything that begins with a seven is a school account. So now we're doing the school's general fund, if you will. And again, we can break these out so that, you know, I think the first section for the school is like high school and it shows their grand total and then it goes all the way down. Uh, and then, uh, so we get to the end of theirs, they have quite a few accounts. And then they do their 7200s are all their special revenue funds. 7,374 are their capital. Some are smaller capital and then they're larger capital. So we have the same thing, a small capital projects and then larger capital projects. <clears throat> and then they get to their 7,600 accounts and those are their food service. And it's either 77 or 78 is their scholarship funds, which we, uh, we invest for them. And then we come to like the grand total of everything. So this is their their school lunch program right here. So you can kind of see where they are there. There have been most, most years they're in the red. And so their yeah. operating budget offsets that. But uh, there have been a couple of years where they, that didn't really happen. So that's, that was nice. So this exercise, uh, Ruth alluded to the fact that over time we've worked with past finance committees to come up with these kind of format and information uh, for your quarterly reports, which, you know, pluck kind of totals off these and present it in a, a quite a bit kind of a customized format I think that still requires some work and we're receptive to providing information in the form that makes sense to you um, although the, we only do those quarterly the, this one is right <coughs> the intent of this these are reports that we can generate through our uh, software system and provide for the council and for the public's benefit on a monthly basis uh, it provides a high degree of Detail, line mm -hmm. item detail. So that's some of the questions we have. Is that enough, too much? Is that the kind of information, I guess, for us, for us to produce these on a consistent monthly basis to the extent that we can use reports that are generated through our current software as opposed to kind of sifting through and recreating? That's going to be certainly easier for us. But we also don't want to be providing just kind of information for information for provision's sake. Uh, we'd like it to be valuable. So was the was the purpose of this just to be transparent and just provide it yeah. in a simple way that that's easy for staff to be able to do it? I mean, I think so. If yeah. if the goal is to do that monthly and it's simple, even though the format is a little challenging, I think um, probably for like most people to look at, 
I, I think it's okay if that's what we want to do. Um, personally, for me, I prefer the quarterly reports that we've been getting. Like that's a, for me, easier to digest, and I think that's that's helpful. But again, this is just that extra level of detail. If people are interested, or even when we look at your finance reports, I'm sure I would want to look at this a little bit more deeper on a quarterly basis, but a month to month basis, I don't know. You know, I actually run this report quarterly, which is where we get our data mm -hmm. from to make the consolidated quarterly. So, um, and I put a lot more subtotals in it, so it's more than a 67 pager, but uh, we can do that and I can put that because the quarterlies are online um, under mm -hmm. the finance mm -hmm. website. So we could actually attach this detail if you want to the back of that. So they have the subtotals, I mean the, the summaries and then mm -hmm. if they wanted the detail, yeah. that would all be there too. Did you create a home for this on, <coughs> on the website? For this? Yeah. No. No, I believe she. I believe Colette has. I don't think we've populated it yet, holding for this discussion. But I know she's worked with her webmaster to oh, okay. have a landing spot for this stuff to reside. Yes. So I like that there's minimal manual intervention that has to happen for this to be produced. I like. I like the idea of having it accessible monthly. Um, what I zone, you know, focused in on with this, what was presented was, you know, through the budget process, we set uh, budget totals for each department. So that's. I, I pretty much just page down to the budget totals and say, how's everybody doing? Which is similar, but not exactly the same as uh, the quarterly report. Right. Um, and the other thought that crossed my mind is I see all these this great detail. Uh, you know, if we categorized it, and I don't know if the system does this, into like, how are we doing on utilities? How are we doing on insurance or wages and salaries? Uh, you know, maybe five to ten buckets that we could say how we're doing relative to plan and prior year. A summary, I guess, is what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. This is a great starting point, but I'm, at the end of the day, what's probably, as a counselor, going to inform us is uh, one or two pages. Uh, it's just mm -hmm. a matter of how you get from this to what the right one or two pages are. Is, well, is if you wanted just totals of how much salary benefits were or how many totals were for supplies, yeah. that would work. But if you wanted you know, the detail of every department's supply account and every that would be just as big as this. <laughs> so I'm not sure though. So for, uh, again, we don't want to promise something we can't deliver on a consistent yeah. basis. So to the extent that we can leverage our current systems to produce reports and information that provides yes. that level of detail, but not too much perhaps, um, and make it a, a part of our monthly routine so it's just done on a regular basis. Ideally, we'd like to, I'd like to automate this such that it kind of almost a workflow that it does it on yes. its own. Mm -hmm. um, so this, we're really looking for direction in terms of what level of detail and what kind of report, and we can then see if we can produce it consistently. So we, we have, we can break it out right now. Well, we can break it out further, I suppose. Well, like into salaries, we can do benefits. We have contracted services. We have purchase services. Uh, we have some other types of contracted services like telephones. And right, and that will stuff. capture those categories Big in buttons. each department and report them in aggregate across so the So then if something's fund. looking off overall for wages and salaries, well, I can go look at this report and say, oh, it's coming from Tom or, or, or somebody else. At least I can kind of drill into it that way. I, I don't have that. I, I can do that for the town very easily because I'm very familiar. I'm not sure I could do that with the school, but with Kate's help, we could probably put something together that would come under those same types of categories. Well, I, well, well, I was just going to extend my apologies because half half the time they hear keep it high level and half the time they hear we want as much detail as yeah. possible. That's and right. I've been part of these conversations <laughs> with Mr. Hamill, myself, and Tom, so I'm kind of giggling about how many different... Well, I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's not lost on Tom. But, but I do think this is, to Ruth's point, like this should be tacked at the end, right? It should be It should be something along the lines of what either one of you said and then just tack this at the end because I this is a relatively easy right so mm -hmm. if, right this yeah come right. Up it's a report I, I run this report before I correct it's a report that can be clicked a button get it monthly the right the so. problem would be if we ran this if we were to schedule this it would on June 30th for example it would run this report at yeah. midnight or something sure yeah I might yeah. not run this report for the quarterlies until like now right but then right. we may have been doing entries that we, we're, yeah. because we're at year end, we're charging yeah. back to June. So yeah. now this monthly report isn't going to equal the quarterly. I, I, you know, I, it's not going to sound great to say it, but I think it's more just a matter of it being there and available. 
Right. I mean, so I, you know, I could probably count on both hands how many people would go to the website and look at this, right? But at least it's there, and it's right. it's there and available. Is it going to get a ton of eyeballs on it? Probably not. But does it fulfill a commitment to say, hey, every month you'll get you'll get a ridiculously detailed report? Yeah, that's fulfilled. And you know, so to me, that's more of it. It's more of just a this particular report, which mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure none of us spent hundreds of hours on looking at, is more of a transparency than it is about. Uh, you know, as far as what are we going to do with it? I'm not going to do anything with this report, right? <laughs> right? But yeah. because the other piece that we could do is, if if everybody's only interested in the, the totals, all of these eight or five, eight or nine pages of executive, I can say, just give me the totals, and it'll right. say, here's right. legislature, right. here's executive, here's HR. If you want it, public finance, works, here's public police, works, fire. can you do police. both? <laughs> Anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> the answer is yes, but it's, yeah. it's two different I think reports. What I'll do is I'll sh well, I'll can you automate both? Like yeah, can you right. yeah. schedule both? Yeah. Um, they're, they're two different purposes, I guess. I, this is more, I imagine your staff might look at something like this and, and try to gauge where they're at. Sure. Um, and if needed, we might try to get down to that level of detail, but I don't think we would use it very often. Um, so for, for council's use, the, the summary is probably more important yeah. until we have a question that the summary doesn't give us the answer to, right. and the, we don't want to burden you with. So the de having the detail, that's where it comes in handy. Well, I think like yeah. Councilor Hamill says all the time, he, he thinks anybody should be able to follow the money, right? So that's that's all this kind of, this is. I mean, it's at least it's there to follow the money if you want to follow the money. Right? And it's actually similar to the, the bond conversation we had in the sense right. where, you know, you we wanted to be able to point at it and say, okay, there that's where it started, that's where it is, and that's where it's going, yeah. right? And, I like, I like the idea of it, it being kind of like the choose your own adventure, right? So if we have <laughs> the certain summaries that kind of give us stuff, then we could say, hey, this one, if somebody wants to look deeper into, then they can, you know, pull up this detailed report and find an answer. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Wildlife indoors. Yeah, I would think uh, the only time you'd ever want this level of detail might be in the fourth quarter of the year to see where, you know, as we're kind of nearing the end as to what the problem area is. But Ruth does a good job of flagging those as part of our quarterlies mm -hmm. um, to say, hey, here's some watch areas. Yeah, We're doing this kind of oversight pretty consistently mm -hmm. uh, throughout the year. Well, and then uh, for, for budget purposes, you know, back when we were doing the budget in, in the full-blown model, the middle model, and here's the summary, I guess that's kind of what I'm hearing we could do for, the, for this also. We can do the quarterlies, we can do this full blown, and then we can do like just the subtotals for the That's, various departments or something. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, uh, from my perspective, not necessarily as a counselor, but uh, as a data guy, I would actually use those monthly static reports that are automated because you can, you can get some pretty neat insights. You know, for example, what's your backlog, right? So if your quarterly report comes out and it's, there's a lot of entries or changes from what was in the that month end, well, maybe, you know what, maybe finance doesn't have enough staff. There's a lot of operational insights that you can mm -hmm. gain from looking at static, automatic um, you know, data. Yeah. But these yeah. are going to be PDF files, right? Yeah, the system can create PDF files. Yeah. I think that's what we... Yeah, that's how to, the, the, the user can deal with well, converting it if they want right. to I'd poochie be, it into I'd a spreadsheet. I'd be fine with, <laughs> with Excel <laughs> as well. <laughs> I've seen them convert the PDF to, to an Excel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, selfishly, we... Serving them up as P static PDFs is, is what we, I think, would prefer doing. If someone wants to dig deeper and start to manipulate the data, if you could have that technology, go for it. But I, I don't see us providing spreadsheets. Now, let's talk through that. Why? Why the aversion to spreadsheets versus a, a PDF? Somebody could do that. All right, so I'm a finance director. I'm an accountant. My, my fear is people are going to take numbers and manipulate them and you know come to somebody and start saying oh look instead of spending a million two I've got my spreadsheet I've changed it or I've manipulated so now it looks like it's three million and maybe I didn't do it on purpose I did it accidentally but it's still now wrong and now it's going to be well look this person had debt and the town has this why are we trusting the town's numbers so from a personal accounting standpoint to me if you give somebody the information that they can't change then everybody's working with the same information and was... sorry that's just I just think from a user standpoint PDFs work on everybody's computer 
<laughs> they're easily accessible I mean, whether you're on the phone. If our or, purpose yeah. is transparency, yeah. that yeah. should serve the correct. Purpose, right? mm-hmm. And we do it on a consistent, frequent yeah. basis. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, I, I guess could there's also different do a spreadsheet, but uh, put a. Uh, Read only or lock it somehow. Yeah, lock it somehow. And well, I don't think he's asking you to share it. I think what he, you know, I think, well, no, I, I think I, he I, is. Do you want an active spreadsheet that you? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't, actually, I don't, I don't even want a spreadsheet. I, I would say just dump this into a text file mm-hmm. and let the, just like the, you know, uh, census data is out in text files. We can do text files. We yeah. can do. Well, exactly. you can do a CSV or a, or a spreadsheet. I'm just saying it for there's different types of users. Right. Um, they're not going to brand it as being town information. They're going to try to dig, find insights into it that, mm-hmm. that you may not be looking for or thinking through. Right. Yeah. Um, but they would share them as their own. So I don't. Um, and it might it might generate some questions, I guess. But I, questions I can yeah questions aren't an issue for me. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the manipulation of the data that changes the data so well, to, that it's not the same numbers. Yeah. Yeah. To pr- protect from that, have we as a town looked into any software or anything that we could load this data into so people could you know, safely manipulate it themselves so that like there could be a dashboard. Like this is great for now and I'm talking more like down the road, but if we ever wanted to get to a point where this data is uploaded monthly, where there is a dashboard that can be manipulated so people can like drill down and potentially get to certain things. So rather than, you know, like what we're talking about, we're saying give us this summary report and then we can go find more details if we want to. Like I just envision a future where there could be a landing page on the website that is like, here's the monthly snapshot of this stuff that allows you then to drill down as you want to or you can follow the money yeah, that way. Absolutely, yeah. So is that something, Ruth, that you've explored or is on the I've horizon? A couple, well, I haven't looked at all both of them, but I've looked at, um, through demos, I've looked at a couple of different packages. One is... Uh, it's Socrates? Socrates. Is a, is a vendor that we currently use. It's just an offshoot of them and, and that's something that we could upload and it would do that. It would give you here's you know here's executive. Oh, okay. I just want the assistant town manager's budget. I want just HR's budget or clerks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if you wanted to, you could go a little bit deeper into some of those lines. Mm-hmm. Or um, there's another one called. But I don't think it gives you the ability to then <coughs> um, manipulate or, or work with that data. I think right. it just gives you the the functionality to almost run your own reports and, and look at Drill it. Into it. Yeah. Drill into it. Yeah, which I think is like what we're trying to do. It's just we're doing it with static PDF reports that are created. But if we can get to a point where it's automated and can be done through through a tool, I think right. that would and be the ideal place to try and get to. And then there's a that's a lot more expensive, but they'll do graphs and all sorts yeah, of other right. stuff. And yeah. I don't know if, I haven't seen this mm-hmm. Socrata one, but Socrata. so I don't know if it really has a, a lot of those types of features, but. Right, like but why? why costs, like it shouldn't so. be any work for you, right? Yeah. If you you right, populated it's something. It's, yeah, right, right. Right. It's yeah. not an accounting function. Yeah. To, right. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. Let's I let's think. crawl before we walk. Let's yes. Right. This well, this is a start. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. this is how you get there. <laughs> so there are packages out there. That it's just a question of, of funding and timing and mm-hmm. staffing to have the time to go through that those mm-hmm. processes, both for IT and finance. No. That makes sense. Were they linked to Munis? The, the Socrata so, one. Socrata one? Oh, okay. So we'll go in and just read it. Yeah. It's like a portal dashboard. Yeah. Well, and when I don't want to bring, I, never, I shouldn't bring this up, but <laughs> when we when I first onboarded, we, we had a dashboard. We had, it wasn't exactly what we're talking about here, but we worked on a dashboard of a snapshot dashboard. Yeah. And then the next step was we were hoping it would be interactive if you wanted to drill down, right? But it had like, 10 or 12, right? It was Larissa's pet project in Mm -hmm. 10 or 12 different indicators. So you could see, you could, you know, and it was, it was a little, you know, it was simple, right? And it wasn't Mm -hmm. necessarily the account. This is very account based, but it was more like fiscal health based, like what, what our debt is, what, yeah. Yeah. That sort of stuff. So, so it's there, you could probably take some of that work that we did and couple it with this and, you know, see if there's, Mm -hmm. so. so there's some stuff that's at least been, Discussed. user interface wise there's been stuff mm-hmm. discussed so i think that's actually built into our financial and fiscal policy yeah right yeah yeah it is so in terms of <coughs> publishing these reports is there do you guys have opinions my opinion would be that, that we pub- have put a put these in a home on the website that anybody can look through a whole 100 pages if they wanted to do yep. you want it 
just like this? Do you want subtotals? Do you want, I would at least do totals by fund so they can see how much is the general fund for the town, how much is for the school. Although the titles, you know, are system generated, so they may just say total general fund. It won't say yep. town's general fund. Right. Somebody's got to mm. have a little bit of that. So we will, uh, as soon as Colette gets back next week, we will get this up, um, this kind of line item detail, and then that will give us time to maybe look at a couple of other reports that will provide same information in different formats. Yeah, I like that. I, I mean, use your judgment, Ruth. It's not, it's not going to be perfect, but it's access to detail that people right. have been asking yeah. for. And, and we can, I yeah. think, I know that Munis has a scheduler program, so that's just, which we haven't used, but, you know, it's a good testing for it. There you go. Schedule, oh, set it up to? Automatically run at a certain time yeah. frame. Tom, when it is up, can we have Allison maybe yeah. shout it out on social yeah. media just to? Yeah, I'm quite sure we do have a landing spot already prepared. Yeah. It's just not been kind of populated yep. yet. We'll, we'll put it up there, and then you take a look at it. And if you That's think true. it's okay, then yeah. then then we can maybe ask Allison to put That's it up That's a good there. idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be up for everyone to see, but not many people will know where to look for it. Yeah. So we'll, right. we'll make it active first. Yeah. Right. yeah, we don't draw attention to the official statement. Or the, yeah. the, 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 it's okay, too, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Any any other discussion on the financial reports? I think that's a good no. result. Thank right. you for pulling so that together. We just the expenditures, but the revenues are pretty much the same way. Yep. The mm -hmm. balance sheet is, yep. is the same way. Yeah. Um, okay. We don't have any members of the public here, so there's no public comment. And uh, next item is a motion to adjourn. So do moved. We, do we know when the next meeting is? I'm sorry. Make sure I put it on my calendar this time. Um, I, I think we'll probably do the regular August meeting, which is, I believe, the Thursday. third Wednesday of the month. Can you correct? It might be the fourth, actually. Yeah, I think we're so August third. Wednesday, the, yeah, 18th. I, I think it's alternating with the town council meetings, typically. Oh, first and third Wednesdays, right? So I believe uh, we're the... Did the fourth, council, right? I guess, that's TBD in August, but oh, first meeting in August and September will be the first. So I will uh, touch base with Colette, and okay. we'll reach back out. Do you guys see a need to meet before our regular scheduled uh, no. August nope. meeting? Nope. Okay. okay. So that'll be the plan. I motion to adjourn. I second. <laughs> I feel a question coming. Yeah, that's why I motion to adjourn. Okay, the second. Um, all those in favor? A motion passes. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you.